Hi Logos, Emily here. I'm the event coordinator with Logos and today I am at the Leonard Orchard and I have a very special guest with me that some of you may know. It is Miss Gina and today we are going to pick apples. Miss Gina, can you tell our friends at Logos what kind of apples we're picking today? Today we get to pick golden delicious apples and they are delicious. Just like the name says. And we are going to make some delicious applesauce and apple crisp later back at the school. Um, so you can come out with your families and visit Leonard Orchard and pick some apples and make applesauce too. So let's pick some apples. Hi, my name is Clover Leonard and this is my orchard, Leonard Apple Orchard. Um, this has been an orchard probably since the 1970s. I have been, and my husband and I bought it from our neighbor um, in 2000. And since 2002, I have been having you picks. This year, as you can see from this tree here, has very few apples on it. Um, last year was a bumper crop. And so some of these trees are really just taking a rest this year. So this year we have COVID-19, which makes it a little different in the orchard. One thing is I don't have any ladders in the orchard for my customers to use because according to Department of Agriculture um, guidelines, I need to be sanitizing between each person's use. And I'm pretty much the only person here who's operating this. so. That's just, I, logistically, I can't be in two places at one time. So we don't have ladders. And also I can't let my customers use buckets that I usually let them use to pick in because those have to be sanitized between each person's use. So all of my customers who are coming out this year need to bring their own containers to pick in and their own containers to take apples home in. Um, because we're outside and um, restrictions for mask wearing are different outside than they are inside, you don't necessarily have to wear a mask when you're outside as long as you can maintain the six feet social distancing. But when you come up to um, weigh the apples or talk to me, I will have a mask on. I don't have a mask on now, but I will. And I want you to have a mask on. How do we find the best apples to pick? <laughs> well, um, that, is, that is always a, a question and sometimes you will. And usually if it comes off pretty easily, you can tell and you kind of just twist it. When we go down to the Goldens, I might be able to find you one. So usually you can just twist it and it comes off easily. If you have to tug at it, that means it's really not ready to come off the tree. And this year, we will talk more about that because I have gone organic. I have a lot more worms. You don't necessarily need to be worried about the worms, but you may not want to pick an apple that you see a lot of wormholes in. And we'll look at some down there in the Goldens. How many different varieties of apples do you typically have and how many do you have this year? Okay, so normally um, my year, my apple season would start August 1st and that would be a Gravenstein, which is an heirloom apple. And there aren't very many Gravenstein trees left in the valley, and I may have the most, and I have 58 trees. Um, and this year I did have some Gravensteins, but it was less than 20% of what I had last year. So it was a small crop, got picked out in three days. Then my next variety is what I call a lunchbox gala. And um, I have 13 trees of that and they're really producing well this year. We haven't even started picking them. And then I have Golden Delicious and I have quite a few trees of Golden Delicious. And they, those would come in, in about right now, the first of September. And if we had a large enough crop, we would be able to pick them through the whole month of September. I'm not too sure how long we will be picking them this year. And then usually about October 1st, or I really like to wait till after the first frost, we would start picking the Fuji apples. And then also I have another variety called Newtown Pippins, which is another heirloom variety, very good for pies. 
um, and those would be what I call my winter apples because we wait until after the first frost. Something about the frost really brings the sugar up in those apples. This year, we have no Fujis and we have no Newtown Pippins. So when we're done with the Goldens, I will be done this year. Okay, so if families want to come pick Golden Delicious apples, when can they start doing that and what days are you open? I'm pretty sure I will definitely be open the 10th, 11th, and 12th, um, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. The following week after that is iffy because I really, what I do is when I'm done on Saturday, then Sunday I go around and really see how much of a crop I have left to know whether it's worth it to open up the next week or not. Okay, great. Um, apples are 50 cents a pound cash or check only and then I'm hoping that I will be open the following week Thursday Friday Saturday 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and then from there I will just have to see really how many apples are right. left and if you're unsure of when I'm open you can always call me Okay, so this year I wanted to go totally organic and I had the help of Dr. Alan Knight. He was with the um, Washington State Department of Agriculture um, and he supplied me, I, I purchased from him all of these traps and he helped me place them and um, timing is real important because these are traps that, let me open this up for you, that have this sticky paper inside and then it's got these two, um, one's a pheromone and one's a different kind of a, I can't remember what exactly what he called it, these two things attract the moth to this trap. And as you can see, all of those little dark spots on there are moths that have gotten trapped there. Unfortunately, it didn't trap enough moths. So the moths were able to um, get into the, the apple, lay their eggs, and that's what makes the worms. And as you can see, those are, that's scab. Let's see where there's some very wormy, wormy, well, okay. Let's see, worm, worm. They call it worm injury. <laughs> it's worms. So, um, Usually I do not have this amount of worms in the orchard and it really has affected um, this crop. I probably will go back to my regular method next year, which is just using a very light spray to get rid of the codling moth because it's the codling moth that makes the worms. So, but I have lots of these traps all over in the orchard, but they didn't do the job they were supposed to do. I'm going to hang that one right back up here. And this was an original one. I don't know if you want, that was, that was the first time we put traps through and look how great. So this was the first trap and it did such a horrible job that look at the apples right next to it, just really full of worms. So it didn't do its job at all. And, well, this is a nice, beautiful apple. I'm just going to pick this one. This is, look at that one. What a beauty! Yay! Um, this one looks like it's got some worm damage on it. You can see the bottom there. That's where the worm's trying to come out. I can't see where the worm went in, but that is all indication that there was, who might have gone in right there, that that was wormy. This one's got a lot of worm 
damage here you can see when you can see a little bit of like it looks kind of like what I call sawdust coming out that's a wormhole that might have been where it went in got a little sawdusty down there but this apple even though it's got that wormhole and this a lot of that apple is still gonna be good it's just you know cutting out those pieces usually we don't have that kind of worm injury this year we do but still a lot of that apple is good so this would be an apple I still would pick from the tree not throw on the ground take home and just cut out those pieces your basket is quite that big. No, I think you're right. This is not 125 apples. So a bushel is an actual measurement? That it is. Okay, how many do you think this is? Um, I would say maybe a peck. And a peck is usually around 40 medium-sized apples. 40 medium-sized? That's probably close to what we have, and I think that's just the right amount we need for our recipe. So that's good that we have a peck of apples. Although, when Logos students come and pick apples here, they'll probably pick apples by weight. So Definitely. they may it may help you to know how many apples you need for your recipes ahead of time. But when you pick your apples here, they're going to be weighed by the pound. But it's a good gauge to know the quantity of how many apples to pick. Right. Unfortunately, most recipes will tell you a number of apples or ounces of apples. So have to do some math to figure it out. Speaking of recipes, let's head back to Logos and make some applesauce and... I vote for apple crisps. Apple crisps sounds delicious. All right, let's go. All right, Logos, we're back and we are ready to make applesauce and apple crisps. We have our rinsed um, Golden Delicious apples. And the first thing we're going to do is peel and core and slice them. Now for the apple crisps, um, the recipe definitely calls for peeling and cording and slicing them. For applesauce, it's not as important that you peel them, but definitely take the core out um, and you can chunk them. But if you like to have the skin in there, great, you can leave that on. Otherwise, you can peel it. If you don't have an apple peeler, quarter slicer like we're going to use today, another great option is to use one of these handy dandy peelers and to just carefully peel it off um, the skin for and making apple crisp. Um, make sure if you're using any kitchen tools like that, though, that you're having a grown-up help you. So, let's get started. All right. Well, I see that my apple crisp recipe calls for two different kinds of apples, so we are super lucky that we picked some gala before we left. So we have our gala apples, which are the red ones, and our golden delicious, which are kind of like a green, greenish gold color. And so how many apples do we need for the chunky? Mine calls for seven peeled, cored, and cut into chunks or slices. So I need seven apples. Seven apples? Probably decent sized apples, I would think. I think so too. Let's find like some of the bigger ones. This one's pretty good size. Um, I think this one might be a little small even. Um, here we go. There's some four. Let's, let's, yeah, let's do four of the gala and Three golden delicious, or you think because they're kind of more of a medium? Yeah, let's do four of each. Why not? Yes. We have plenty of apples. So the peeler slicer core is really kind of fun. It's this handy little gadget that you are super lucky to just stick the apple on, and then you flip down this lever and scoot your apple closer to the blade. 
and you just turn the handle and it's peeling and slicing and taking the core out of the apple all at the same time. And then when you've reached the end, you pull the entire apple off. Your apple peeled, cored, and sliced, I simply cut it in half and then we put our slices of apples and that one turned out perfectly. Sometimes part of the core will still remain and you might have to trim that out, but this one worked perfectly. And then you simply pull your lever, pull that back again, and remove the core and the peel. And do another one. So while Miss Gina peeled and cored and sliced the apples for the apple crisp, I counted out the apples that we need to make applesauce. So we want to make about four quarts of applesauce, which is four big quart sized jars. Um, so each, so we're quadrupling the recipe. So each batch takes eight apples. So I have about 32 apples and a few extra just in case any of them do happen to have um, a mushy spot or a little wormy guy living in it and we can substitute it for one of the extra apples. Okay so the first step in making our apple crisp is to preheat the oven which I did that while Miss Emily was talking to you about how many apples she has and now we are going to toss our apples with lemon juice and vanilla. Normally you would use the lemon juice to keep the apples from turning brown because if you can see into our bowl, once an apple gets hit by air, it starts to turn the fruit. Doesn't mean it's bad, it just means that it's been exposed to open air. So I'm going to slice my lemon in half and we are going to use a juicer to get a tablespoon of lemon juice. things I like about cooking with Emily is all of the fun tools you get to use. <laughs> Me too. And the juicer is one of them. I love blue juicers. Sometimes I'll use that juicer and make homemade lemonade. Yes, or orange juice. Well, let's start with that. We might have a tablespoon. I'm not sure. It's probably pretty close. Yeah, I think so. Put in a tablespoon and a tablespoon. And gave me a tablespoon of lemon juice with a little bit left over. Great, now we need a tablespoon of vanilla, I think. A half a teaspoon of vanilla. Ooh. There's our half teaspoon, and now it says to toss them, and that's really just a fancy way of saying stir it up. So now we are going to stir our apples with the lemon juice and the vanilla to kind of get it all treated and spread throughout. Get the yumminess spread throughout. So, our recipe doesn't really even call for the sugar, so the vanilla is going to be the sweetener in this recipe. And next, our recipe tells us to pour the apples into a nine by 13 inch baking dish. Miss Emily brought a lovely one. So we're going to pour them in there. And it says to spread them out evenly, not worrying about whether or not they are overlapping. Oh, I smell the vanilla and the apples. I hope you guys get to make this recipe. So yummy. And that's an important thing to mention. If, even if you can't make it out to go apple picking this year, you can get apples from the grocery store Absolutely. and try this recipe yourself, even if you can't go to the orchard to pick your own apples. So I'm going to call that good. Looks good to me. 
And now we are going to work on the crisp topping, which is my favorite part of the apple crisp. <laughs> So it says, in a medium bowl, to stir together flour, oats, brown sugar, and cinnamon. This is where the walnuts come in. Miss Emily asked me if there was anything else we needed, and I said, I always like to add walnuts to my crisp mixture because I like the extra crunch. So we're going to add all some walnuts, even though the recipe doesn't call for it. I love the crispy crunch of these, too. Yes. So, first we need a half cup of flour. Half cup measuring cup. You can use some flour. I'm going to use some little butter knives here and take the back of it. Pull it out. So, I've got a nice smooth half cup and I'm dumping it into the bowl. And next, we need a cup of rolled oats. Now, sometimes recipes will specify whether or not they want rolled or instant oats. A lot of times recipes like an apple crisp will call for old-fashioned or rolled oats because they're just a sturdier oat and it won't just turn into mush in your recipe. So we need a whole cup of those. So now some brown sugar, a cup mm. of brown sugar. See all the sugar yeah. here in the topping. Yep. And then the natural sugar in the apples, when it cooks, it's going to get all caramelized. Oh, it's so delicious. Does it say packed? Brown it sugar? does not. It just says a cup, but I'm assuming that we would probably pack it a little bit. Typically, you pack it a little bit. part that is kind of a little bit of work. So the recipe says using a pastry blender, which is this guy, or two forks, two butter or knives. two knives, you need to mix the butter with the dry ingredients. And that's where the work comes in. So while you work on that, I can chop some walnuts, because I'm going to chop them into a little bit smaller than halves, and then I can take a turn at the pastry blender if you desire. Yes, and you might not have a pastry blender at home, so there are other options. Um, like we said, you can use the two butter knives, the two forks, or um, sometimes if I make crisp at home, um, I have what's called the food processor, and so you can um, get your butter into the stage that it likes um, that way as well. So while you're working on that, Emily, I'm going to work on chopping up a half cup of walnuts. So the walnuts are halves and pieces, but I don't like my walnuts quite as large as a half. So that's why I chop them. Um, here, I'm going to use a knife to chop them. But at home, I actually have a handy dandy gadget that you put the walnuts in the top and you turn a handle and it chops your nuts and they collect into a jar in the bottom that's quite lovely. That's nice because they don't escape off your cutting board when you're cutting them. True, but that's all right. So the recipe calls for one stick of butter um, and it says soften to room temperature. 
So before we went apple picking, I actually took this butter out of the fridge and set it on the counter here. So that way it would be room temperature by the time we got back. I'm gonna take my pastry blender and just until we have what looks like uh, coarse crumbs um, or large crumbs um, as the recipe states um, of butter so basically the liquid of the butter will um, grab onto all of the flour and sugar and oats and so it'll have a crumbly look to it and it won't look like regular butter anymore so that's what we're going for is going to take a turn show you so it's starting to look a little bit more like coarse crumbs here and sometimes if you rock it instead of just going up and down it helps push things together a little bit to scrape that out and then I think we can stir in our walnuts. So I chopped a half a cup of walnuts that we're now going to add to our topping and stir it all together. This is our recipe say next, Emily. All right, sprinkle the mixture evenly over the apples. So now Apples get topped with their crisp. And we'll give that to you. Just kind of spread it out, make sure everybody's covered. Got some of this. That looks great. All right, now we get to go in the oven. So we're gonna bake for 35 to 40 minutes until the apples are tender and the top is brown and crunchy, which I cannot wait. Um, and just a trick for when you're checking to see if your apples are tender, I like to take a fork and see if it um, sticks easily to some of the apples. If it still feels like the apples are a little bit crunchy, then it probably needs a little bit more time. Sounds great. All right, let's go in the oven. Okay. in the oven, we are going to get started on our applesauce. Applesauce is so easy to make. Really all you have to do is get your apples into a pot and then add a couple things to flavor it and let it cook for a while. So um, first thing we're going to do is peel and core and slice our apples um, like we did with the apple crisp. So we're going to use one of my favorite kitchen tools, which is the microplane. 
and it takes the zest off of citrus fruits, um, like this lemon or the orange, um, and then you just would zest that into your applesauce. And this is totally optional. I'm not even following a recipe for this, um, but basically you need um, your apples and a little bit of liquid at the bottom, um, and it can be a very small amount, um, maybe like a quarter cup. So for this recipe, we're going to use orange juice, but you could use lemon juice, you could use apple cider, you could use water, um, just whatever you have on hand, or maybe there's a specific flavor that you might like that goes with your apples. Um, maybe even cranberry juice. Um, try something new. And then, um, so I'm gonna juice those oranges, and then we'll add these to our pot. kitchen tools like this microplane or even like the peeler quarter slicer that we used earlier, um, that's totally okay. You can um, put your apples in not peeled. You can just chunk them up into pieces and take out the core. The only thing to remember is that it might take a little bit longer to cook if you don't have them in nice thin slices like we do here. Um, but that's okay. Um, because the longer it cooks, the better your house smells then the longer it's gonna smell that way. Um, so I'm also gonna go ahead and add a tablespoon of vanilla. Have you added vanilla to your? I never have added vanilla to my applesauce, but it sounds like it would be delicious. I think it'll go good with the orange that we put in there. Yeah. Um, and then you were telling me earlier one of your favorite things to add Cinnamon sticks. Cinnamon sticks. So we're going to add, how many should we add? I, I usually add three. Okay. And I like to put some on top, but I also like to bury some down through the middle and in the bottom. Ooh, that's a good idea. We should try that. And I'm going to break it in half just so they get more interspersed. Tuck those guys in. ready to go. Um, we've got the orange juice added and the acid from that orange juice, um, just like the lemons and the apple crisp, is going to stop those apples from turning brown. Um, and it, just the orange juice flavor will give the applesauce a really good flavor. An extra boost. An extra boost, for sure. Um, so now we're going to start it cooking. So I'm going to cook it on high, and so it should take about three to four hours, maybe longer because we filled this really full. But basically just keep an eye on it and when the apples are soft and mushy, um, you'll definitely be able to tell when it's ready. Um, and also while it's cooking, if you can give it a stir and just kind of mix the apples up, then the ones on the bottom are obviously going to cook quicker and so then it just kind of gets the ones on the top that aren't cooking as fast mixed up and then it just a little bit more evenly cooked. Exactly. And, um, once you're done cooking, make sure you just go in and take out those cinnamon sticks because um, you don't want those, you don't want to eat those. That's a lot of cinnamon. Um, so let's get this on the crock pot and we'll start it cooking. All right, so our timer went off. Let's check on our apple crisp. And it's bubbling this Emily. Oh my goodness it smells so good in here and it looks golden brown and crunchy on top. I think we're ready. I think so too. Okay so we'll just let that cool for maybe about 10 minutes before we before we serve it up. Um, might be good if you have it on hand to maybe serve it with some ice cream but we don't have ice cream here. Darn. But Maybe, maybe if you have some at home, I'd recommend it. Yum. All right, Logos, Miss Emily here again, and I had to take the crock pot home because it had been probably about two and a half, three hours, and it was time for me to go home. So I brought our crock, crock pot of applesauce home, and now we're going to check on it. Um, last I checked on it when I left Logos, um, 
The apples were not very mushy yet, so let's see where they're at now. Okay, look at that. This is looking a lot more like applesauce than it was before. Um, so if you're maybe like me and you like a little bit chunkier applesauce, um, it's just about ready to go. Um, but otherwise, you might let it go a little longer, um, but maybe not too much longer um, because it is looking pretty close to done. Um, and so what you can do is you can take out the cinnamon sticks. If you like a smoother applesauce, you can mash it up. Or if you have an immersion blender, you can have a grown-up help you um, blend it up nice and smooth. But let's, let's give this a stir. Let me see my cinnamon sticks in there. Yeah, I think this is definitely ready. So it has been just about three and a half, four hours. Um, so the applesauce is ready to go. And we'll put it in my jars. And that's how you make applesauce. I've got my applesauce and it, it smells really good. It looks delicious. And I'm gonna let it cool a little bit before I take a bite. But I really hope you get a chance to try something new and make um, some applesauce on your own. Thank you for joining us on this virtual field trip to the Leonard Orchard and we'll see you next time. I'm Emily and it's been legendary.